Hi beauties, welcome back to another episode of Beauty Within. It's your host, Rowena. Today, let's talk about an essential and superstar ingredient known as the fountain of youth that can help us brighten our skin, even out complexion, combat signs of aging, and keep our skin looking fresh from the inside out. Yes, said fountain of youth can be applied topically and ingested. As you've probably guessed by now, we're talking about antioxidants. What we see on the surface, is like a mirror to what's going on inside. And that's why we like to concentrate on delicious drinks we can make to heal ourselves from within. Yeah, more liquid concoctions and lattes. The five drinks I'll be sharing today are personal favorites that are jam packed with antioxidants. We have a whole video dedicated to this topic if you're interested. And after a quick refresher, we'll walk through my favorite recipes with most being able to be made under five minutes. Cooking easy, we like our drinks like how we like our skincare routine. Streamlined and minimal. Now let's talk about antioxidants. What's an antioxidant and where can we find them? If you've ever heard of the benefits of green tea or been told to eat your fruits, the reason for this is antioxidants. Antioxidants are super cool, thoughtful and oh so generous because they help give out extra electrons to destructive free radicals before they start damaging all our other healthy cells. The best part is that antioxidants are able to give away electrons without destabilizing themselves and they can even clean up free radicals from within the cells. How neat. This means when we eat, drink or apply antioxidant rich ingredients, we're helping boost our bodies to be able to defend against harmful radicals of the free. And if you've ever heard of poly phenols, resveratrol, or bioflavonoids, these are all very potent forms of antioxidants. As with most vitamins and minerals, antioxidants are best to consume as superfoods. So what are some superfoods loaded with antioxidants? As a general rule of thumb, look for whole unprocessed foods grown from Mother Earth. Eat the rainbow. The more color, the better. There are berries, dark chocolate, leafy greens, nuts, legumes. We can basically find foods high in antioxidants in most food categories. How we feed our bodies are essentially how we're feeding our skin. So be gentle, mindful, and extra inquisitive like the emoji with the spectacle monocules on its face. That's like... Now let's get to superfood drinks. Today we'll be going over my personal matcha recipe, chocolate rooibos, healthy superfood hot chocolate, ginger brown sugar, goji berry and longan, and mung bean soup drink. Let's start with matcha. Matcha is a personal favorite of mine. It's something that I drink every single day. Aside from its major heart eye inducing pastel green hue, a scoop of this vibrant green powder is packed, capital P-A-C-K-E-D, with antioxidants and nutrients. Matcha is also high in L-theanine, an amino acid found in green tea. It's a great source of calming energy without the jitters and drowsiness. While all matcha is green tea, not all green tea is matcha. It all depends on how the green tea leaves are grown, harvested, and processed. The leaves of ceremonial grade matcha are usually shade grown, hand picked, and hand ground into a fine powder. That's so meticulous. And this makes matcha far more nutritiously dense and concentrated compared to green tea. All benefits aside, the process of making matcha is also highly therapeutic for me since we're talking mind, body, and soul. I found that having a routine like this every morning has proven to be massively calming. It's also an amazing way to start the morning, spending a few minutes being present and focused while having a little tea ceremony with yourself to honor and welcome a brand new day. And as Fel mentioned, it's best to consume matcha as is, so just water and matcha, but we can also live a little and add a little bit of mil mi milk. <laughs> a little bit of milk and butter. When my dad has seen me make matcha with milk, he kind of like raises his eyebrows a little because he's like, oh, the benefits of matcha are outweighed when you add milk because some chemical things happen. But our team looked into it and research has shown polarizing results. Some say it's the worst and some say it's okay. So for sweetener, I prefer Manuka honey or maple syrup. Both of these are really good alternatives to regular table sugar. And I also like adding in some collagen powder and Taiwanese almond powder to make the latte far more nutritiously dense and filling. As we've mentioned in previous videos, collagen is found naturally in our skin and is responsible for giving it that bing bing elasticity. However, experts and skeptics say that what your skin and body are absorbing isn't 
even the full molecule of the collagen, but rather protein fragments or individual amino acids. In other words, it's too broken down, so it may not work as advertised. But again, I like taking it for protein and for creaminess. And for the Taiwanese almond powder, also known as apricot kernel powder, is a great source of protein, vitamin E, and is also high in fatty acids. It also has anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial effects. So apricot kernel can be a little controversial because there are two types. In Western medicine, it contains amygdalin, which turns into cyanide in your body, as opposed to Eastern medicine and Eastern culture. Apricot kernel has actually been used for many, 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 many hundreds thousands of years and there is a difference there's southern apricot kernel and northern apricot kernels southern apricot kernels tastes are sweet and used in normal cooking desserts just daily consumption whereas northern apricot kernels taste bitter and is used as medicine and this northern apricot kernel is generally what the west things as poisonous and not good for us. So there is a difference. The specific mix that I use is from Taiwan and it's completely safe to consume. It's actually a very, very popular drink in Taiwan and in Asia, it's Xingren Nai. So it's like almond milk tea. Yeah. Another one of my personal favorites is chocolate rooibos or just rooibos in general, especially as a night cap. It's a very soothing non-caffeinated tea with notes of honey and a slight nutty taste. Besides a warm cup of rooibos tasting like a warm hug, it's also jam-packed with antioxidants and may also reduce the severity of breakouts by helping to regulate the immune system. And as with most teas, it comes in loose leaf form as well as tea bags. I happen to have a chocolate rooibos loose leaf, so this is what I'm using and I personally find that the taste of rooibos because there are hints of like vanilla and honey it's sweet enough as is and it's great moving on to our healthy superfood hot chocolate who doesn't love hot chocolate I love thick European basically drinking liquid chocolate type hot chocolates but my waistline does not and my brain also does not because it's just too overly sweet I've been loving daily harvest version of a superfood hot chocolate so I tried to recreate it myself to save some money I adjusted the recipe a little to what I had at home I had cacao powder coconut sugar coconut oil and a packet of reishi and chaga mushroom superfood powder and a little bit of sea salt let's first talk about the ingredients cacao powder made from cacao beans is loaded with antioxidants magnesium and iron a quick here to note is that cacao is not cocoa i mean they both come from the cacao bean but cacao powder is just a lot more nutritious than cocoa and cocoa powder is usually mixed with a bunch of different sugars and fatty things that we may not want in our bodies. Cacao also contains a compound called PEA, which is said to boost your mood and energy. And this, our friends, is the reason why we all love chocolate so much. As for reishi and chaga mushroom, reishi mushrooms are high in anti-inflammatory properties and they have this quite bitter taste. Chaga mushrooms found on birch tree, also known as the king of mushrooms, help improve immune system through their effects on white blood cells, reduce fatigue and stress. It also helps fight inflammation. As for coconut oil, it's a great source of antioxidants and may have antibacterial, antimicrobial, as well as anti-inflammatory properties. And it's also a healthy fat. And the main reason of using coconut oil in this specific recipe is that it helps thicken the drink. And because I like my drink, thick so to make this heat up your milk of choice I use oat milk about 10 ounce or a little more than a cup with medium to low heat to make sure it doesn't burn and I add a one tablespoon of cacao one tablespoon of coconut sugar and one tablespoon of coconut oil I added a few sprinkles of this reishi chaga blend from Fork Sigma I just happen to have this at home in my superfood pantry because I'm low-key a health nut but you don't really need this and I also added a dash of sea salt so then you whisk it let it simmer and I found that after I poured it into a cup I left it sitting on the counter for maybe 10 minutes for it to cool down and after 10 minutes the drink naturally thickened it was really really good I'm proud of myself and you guys should try this because it's so much healthier than regular hot chocolate Moving on to ginger, black sugar, or brown sugar, or red sugar. Many people drink ginger with black sugar to reduce inflammation and ease in digestion. The main ingredient is ginger, which is a very popular spice that has 40 different 
antioxidant properties, that's a lot, to help fight off free radicals and reduce signs of aging. Black sugar is a much healthier alternative to white and brown sugar. It retains its molasses content, meaning it's high in potassium, iron, calcium, and other minerals. My mom has always told me that when it's the time of month and females are on their periods, you can eat as much of it as you want and you will never gain weight. And I don't know how true that is, but as your uterus is doing its job that one time every month to shed its life, Lining. It's good to replenish nutrients, especially iron and magnesium. Black sugar also helps promote metabolism, nourishes the body, and improves bowel movement. So this drink takes a little bit longer to make because you do need to boil and cook the ginger a bit to really get the flavor out. Here is recipe for a mama Thai. You first wash the ginger very, very thoroughly, and there's no need to skin or take the skin off of the ginger because there's health benefits in that. And you can either cut the ginger into small smaller pieces, or you can, as my mom said, this is verbatim, hit with back of knife. So you add the ginger into cold water or lukewarm water, and then you start boiling it all together in medium or high heat. Bring to boil and then let it simmer for another 30 minutes on low heat. So after this 30 minutes, when the flavor of the ginger and the aroma of ginger is coming out, this is when you add the black sugar and allow it to melt for about five minutes as you slowly and gently just twirl the beautiful mixture. And it's gonna turn from this like beautiful, slightly golden, transparent, color into a dark rich brown color at this point you're done for this specific recipe is best to consume during colder winter months because ginger is high in heat it will raise the level of heat in your body so if it's already really hot outside during the summer months drinking something like ginger you'll probably overheat yourself and this is from traditional chinese medicine there's heatiness i, I guess this is a new word for huo qi or like the internal heat of your body versus coldness so it's like a spectrum some foods are hotter and some foods are cooler. Ginger is definitely on the hotter side. And something on the cooler side that helps cool and soothe your body will be the green bean soup that we'll talk about a bit later. So for now, let's move on to longan and goji tea. So I just, I never really know how to pronounce longan, longyan. So my mom has been feeding me goji berries since I was a kid and she totally giggled like in my face when I started getting really into healthy eating and superfoods saying I've been feeding you this since you were a baby, which is true. Goji berries are packed with nutrients including calcium, potassium, zinc, iron, and selenium. It's also a great source of vitamin C and antioxidants and it also has high levels of beta carotene to help protect and repair skin, especially against UV damage. And because it has amino acids, it can help hydrate, brighten, and even out the skin. As for Long Yen, also known as Dragon Eye, it is said to help with sleep issues, reduce anxiety, and improve the appearance of skin, among other traditional benefits. This specific tea is super, super easy to make. All you have to do is throw in a handful of goji berries and some dried Long Yen into a cup, pour in hot water, and just let it sit for maybe maybe a few minutes, gently stir it, and then it's good to go. Goji berries and long yin are very naturally sweet on its own, so I really don't think you need to add any extra sweeteners. I love making this drink any time of the day, any time of the year, and I think it's a great alternative to just drinking water. So you know how some people add lemon to their water, some people add fruits, like frozen fruits, into their water to like encourage themselves to drink more water. I think this is a great way to drink even more water by spicing up with something that's naturally sweet and super, super high and antioxidants. Mung bean soup, also known as green bean soup, but there is a difference between mung bean and green bean, and we'll get back to this in a second. So I grew up drinking this. If I eat too much fried foods, spicy foods, foods that will naturally bring out that inflammation in your body, I get a nosebleed like instantly. In Chinese medicine, mung beans are cooling ingredients, meaning they help to clear the body from excess heat. Not only are mung beans rich in vitamins, minerals, and gut balancing nutrients, but they're also rich in antioxidants, as with everything we've mentioned in this video. So for this specific recipe, another one for Mama Tai, these are her very, very specific instructions. Pick out the bad beans. This is very important, very, very important, because as with all beans and legumes, it's just important to pick out the beans, especially if you're going to cook it, because one bad bean could potentially, you know, ruin the whole pot. And then you wash it thoroughly. I wash it maybe about four or five times, and even like on the fifth 
little rinse pour, there's still a lot of like floaters, like little bean shells that are floating around and being poured out. So the proportion is about one cup green bean to about eight to 10 cups of water. It's really up to you. If you want it to be more of a drink, then you just add more water. If you want it to be more concentrated and diluted, you can put a little less. And with the freshly rinsed beans, you just transfer it directly into a cold pan that you turn on and heat for about three to five minutes. What this helps do, according to my mother, is helps it be less starchy. And I have found that when you first fry the beans, it does help the bean contain its shape a little more as opposed to it exploding and turning into this like mushy gush that some people may like, but I like beans and bean form. And after you fry the beans for a little, this is where you add water and you bring it to a boil. Let it boil for about three to five minutes, cover, and just let sit for about 30 minutes to an hour. According to my mother, this whole process is for the beans to cook on its own so you don't have to keep checking in on it. After another 30 minutes of just letting it sit, it's about 80% cooked. So when you come back to it, all you have to do is cook it for another five, 10 minutes, add your sugar of choice, and that's it. And if you wanna reap all the benefits of this drink, it is said that you should drink the water from the beans maybe within like five, 10 minutes after cooking it because the more you cook anything, the more you're cooking away the nutrients. So the benefits of drinking a cooling drink like this is really to help reduce inflammation in your body. I remember when my face broke out for the first time, honestly didn't break out that much, but like it did break out nonetheless when I got my face threaded in Taiwan. My mom told me to make this drink to help just like calm everything down internally. And I did find that it did help a lot. Another time that it's really good for is when it's really hot out, you've been baking in the sun, you come home, it's a great drink to help cool everything down and it just helps you from overheating and with the ginger black sugar drink being great for winter this drink is very good for spring and summer when it's really hot i would not recommend drinking this when you're already very cold and freezing because there's no no cold, there's nothing to calm down. You're already very calm and very cold. So with all of that, these are a couple of my favorite drinks and lattes that are jam-packed with antioxidants that's good for our skin from the inside and out. And with the variety of drinks mentioned, I think we offered a little bit for everyone. As we mentioned, a little bit of Chinese traditional medicine in this specific video will definitely go deeper if it's something that you guys are interested in between the difference of hot and cool foods and what it can do for your body and how to know what to eat for yourself and when and why. And with all of that, if you haven't checked out Felicia's video for drinks for clear skin, make sure you check that out and we'll see you guys next time on Beauty Within. Bye. The five drinks I'll be... Mm, whoa, spit. <laughs> oh, I just found a huge flaxseed between my teeth. <laughs> Cute. Ginger! Why do I sound like a gerbil?